everybody. Hey, everybody. Larry Bella here. I'm Adam Harrison, and we're from Bella Lost Souls. And thanks for watching us on yes. coming to our Twitch stream. Check this out. Today we have Soul Wars. Yeah, the new Warhammer Age of Sigmar 2.0, essentially. 2.0, second edition. Are we counting the, the first General's Handbook as like 1. Point, like 1.5? Like 1.1. Like, like 1. 1. And then this is one, just the, the new 1. 2. 1.2, and then 2. Okay, yeah. But this is 2.0. It's yes. Great. Yes. It's all new. Uh, it just got... Um, it's up for pre-order. It, it went up for pre-order yeah. this Saturday. Yep. We have it. It's in studios. You can tell. We have it here. We have both armies fully painted up. We're yeah. going to be spending an hour with you guys right now talking all about this. This is the big news of the week. Uh, yeah. In the industry, probably. Oh, yeah. Uh, there is no bigger news than that this particular week. So we're going to be going all over this. Uh, we have the main launch product. We have um, Malign oh. Sorcery, which is... Big, scary. <laughs> we got the Mind Sorcery book back here. Spe Endless spells. We've got the General's Handbook back here. We got the General's Handbook. We got so much stuff. We do. We, we also do. have everything that was in that box set painted up right over there off screen. So as soon as we're done talking with you guys and hanging with you guys for an hour, we're going to be swinging over there and we're going to be playing our first uh, Age of Sigmar uh, Soul Wars game. On the, on the stream, yeah. On the streams, you guys will yeah. get to get an idea of uh, we're just going to be playing with what is in the box. Just a straight game, so we can see the new rules. You guys can watch it, see how different it is. We're gonna go pretty slow in we're terms gonna, of just going yeah. We're gonna take our rules. time. Yeah, we'll take our time. It's we'll a friendly game, just to run through the, the yeah. new rules. Let you guys see it. Speaking of which, new rules. Can we show these off real fast? Yes, absolutely. So Larry's got the core rule book. Right here. If you remember, this is, this this, is a new one. This was the old one. All flip it over. Four pages. Of, no interior of pages on that. That was it. Just four. But now, what do we got? Now we have. Uh, well, the book is it's a booklet now. Is eighteen pages, uh, but it's not eighteen pages of rules. Uh, right. it, it's really ten. Everything past page ten is missions. Right. So uh, basically, we've gone from uh, four pages here yeah. to ten pages here. Yep. But even even ten is uh, even ten is stretching it because as I flip through, uh, there's big pictures. So you know, diagrams, the bottom the half of those two pages is a picture. Yeah. And then. There's another page right here where the entire page is a picture. So really, it's eight pages of rules, which, coincidence, is exactly the same length that the rules are, the core rules are for Warhammer 40,000. Yeah. So what we've basically seen is we've gone from four to eight, and Age of Sigmar is now the same, it, the core <laughs> rules are the same level of complexity as Warhammer 40,000. So they're yes. now very much sister games. Um, they are not the same game. No. They play differently. It's not. They did not 40k eyes Age of Sigmar. Age of Sigmar yeah. still is its own thing, but it's the same level of complexity as 40k. So if yeah. you could get into 8th really easy and have a great time, um, you're going to be able to handle Age of Sigmar 2.0. Yeah. If you... Um, I, I like it. It's 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 definitely it's meatier than 1st edition was. Yes, absolutely. Uh, it, it has more clarifications, I think. 1st mm -hmm. uh, edition was like super easy, super rudimentary. Really, really, really You can really dive right clean. in. Yeah. This has got a little bit more crunch to it, a little bit more to gnaw on yeah. um, in terms of rules. And I think it needed that uh, yeah. just to help clarify some stuff. And I mean, they learned their... It, yeah. I think they learned their lesson. You know, yeah. every game that was out there you know, you know, is going to have its teething problems yeah. when it hits its first edition, and mm -hmm. and second editions tends to be when games really yeah. hit their stride. You you often say that second when a game hits their second edition, then you know it's legit. Right, it's legit. It has yeah. arrived. It has established its audience. Yep. It warranted a second edition, yep. and it gives them a chance to go in there and clean it all up. Yep. And you know, you know, and and Add respond stuff, to what the stuff, tweak things. Yeah, and and respond yeah. to basically what the customers wanted. Yeah. And that I think is exactly what we want. You know, no, no one. I would, I, you know, I would say that you know, no one when Age of Sigmar 1.0 came out, mm -hmm. no one was out there saying this game is too complicated no. and needs less rules. That was not yeah. where. That's not the direction. And then we got that FAQ that was like eight pages, <laughs> right? <laughs> so they they got rid of that. And the like, General's Handbook really, really, really yeah. pretty much shorted up, got it fixed up, and now 2.0 basically lets them reset it and launch the game that yeah. you know that you know is going to be very very. Um, you know, solid, mm -hmm. familiar, balanced, and, you know, it's just going to be easy to get into, and yet have the depth that I think wasn't there in 1.0 right off the bat. Yeah. So, can we can we start off by talking about what's actually in the uh, Soul Wars box? Yes. Like, everything that's actually in this box. Yes. Really, really quick, as an aside, we do want to say, uh, we do want to talk to you guys for the next hour. Yeah. Uh, so, all you guys and gals out there, if you like Age of Sigmar, you're interested in it, you think it's cool, uh, throw us comments. We're here, yes. we're live. Uh, put them in chat right now. That'll go straight to uh, Mars, and she will get those over to us, and we want to talk to you guys. Yeah. So, 
We don't want to just be here talking, yammering for an hour. We want to hear <laughs> from you. So, so, real fast, what's in this book? Miniatures, first off. There's 52 yes. models in the book, Yep, are in the box, and that's going to be split between the new uh, uh, Stormcast Eternals uh -huh. chamber and the new Night Haunts miniatures. Yes. All of the miniatures in this box are new. There's no recast yep. from the old stuff. Yep. These are all brand new miniatures, yep. which is super cool. I believe six new units for Stormcast Eternals, never and seen before. Yep. And seven new Night, Night Haunt units, which is yep. super cool. I mean, one of the big things that people had been had been grousing about yep. was that since... Um, you know, Age of Sigmar has been redefining everything. You know, mm -hmm. it has been a complete reinvention of, of everything that Warhammer Fantasy used to be way back in the day. Yes. And we'd seen Stormcast Eternals, and they came out, and they were the new, you know... And then we've seen some of the other races, like Carriage and Overlords, had come out, and they completely redefined, you know, it was a very, very... There's a right, huge right, amount right. of creativity being yes. poured into this game, you know, so it, you know, it is, you know, it's clearly Games Workshop's goal to make a universe that is, can stand on its own. Yeah. It is very different, it's very divergent, it just, it doesn't feel like, you know, milk toast, you know, Tolkien-esque fantasy. No, know? this is very different from, from and, what it was before. And there was a lot of yeah. grousing that we hadn't seen anything on the ghost undead side of things. Yeah. We had Nagash, uh, and all of his miniatures, and the new Mortok miniatures. They got a came, bunch of cool stuff that came the out, end times. That came out during the end times. Yeah, the and Morgas, the, the, the Mortarks, all those super cool units. And then, and then just nothing for like two and a half years. Right, and then uh, Tomb Kings was discontinued and went yeah. away. And so people just have been like, hey, everyone else has gotten cool stuff. Chaos got tons of attention. Order got tons of attention. Even Stormcast. Destruction with the Auras. And Destruction got, got uh, Iron Jaws. Yeah. And all kinds of cool stuff. And people yeah. were just like, hey, hello. Where's death. our death at? And here it is. So a ton of those miniatures. Whole new range. This box also contains the massive 320-page hardbound book. Hardcover, right. Hardcover. Uh, this book has... Oh, so much lore in here to, to chew through. Yep. It's got breakdowns for every single faction in the game. Um, very rules. much very much a direct analog yes. to the hardcover Warmer 40,000 book. Yep. Laid out roughly the same way. You get the core rule book in here as well, which this is your cheat sheet guide that's going to take you straight, like Larry said, it's got all the rules in here, as well as, and as the core some, missions. some core missions and stuff like that. Uh, it's got a Start Here book, which is, if you're brand new to Age of Sigmar, this is the book you're going to want to hop into it's got quick recaps of both factions right tells you uh, what start here what stuff. what is this stuff yeah that's the book for you you walk into a store and you're like i am interested in tabletop yeah. gaming what is this and you know nothing yes there's a book it's also got the battle plan that i believe is designed for this box specifically that's what we're playing which today. is what we're playing this is going to be first blood um we'll get to why here in a bit but that's also in the box and then the third uh booklet in the box is going to be this battle for glimps forge uh, kind of a campaign book, but really this is a lore book. Uh, it's got the background for each and every uh, unit that's in the box. Uh, so all that fun stuff. It's also got the pitch battle profile points, mm -hmm. which you'll be using when you play Soul Wars. One caveat to that, these pitch battle profile points are different than the General's Handbook 2018. Um, yes. And we'll kind of talk about that here in a little bit, but uh, there's a post up on our website, bellsouls.net, uh, right now talking about the points uh, disparity Difference. between the two right. and kind of why that? I thought that they did that. So, And it has to do with the scenario and, and some other stuff. Uh, what else was in the book? I think that was, that was it, pretty, pretty much everything in the box. Oh, not everything. War Scrolls. You get 13 War Scrolls, one for each unit. Uh, they have the, the unit on the back or the art so you know what it looks like. And then they have full rules here as well. Yep. So, quick cards. start guide. And then, of course, you get your dice and your, your range. Right. And all, that all your basic too. stuff. Yeah. Basic and let's stuff. not forget the miniatures. Yes. And, of course, the miniatures. Let's not forget All that. 52 of those. So, that's everything in the Soul Wars box. Uh, it's retailing right now for 160 US. Yep. So, it's a pretty good deal. That's a super good deal. Uh, super good deal. Um, I, I would not be surprised if players that want to start the new Stormcast or Night Haunts pick up two of those boxes or s split them with buddies. I don't know however you want to do that. But, mm -hmm. it's a pretty good deal. It's a ton of, ton of plastic to play around with. So, that's everything in the box. What do we want to talk about next? Uh, first of all, do we have any questions? Not just yet. Not just yet. All right, come on. Give us your questions. We want... Give me that thorough. Come on. We can't. I know. We've got to have more questions. Uh, so, the book. The book. Let's go talk Holy about... Holy cow. Let's talk about the book. Um, <laughs> Where do you want book? to start with this well, thing? It's, uh... So, uh, one, um, first of all, we're going to go through... Um, we're going to go through it... Uh, Page briefly. by page, just kidding. Yes, page by page in detail. No, 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 we're not. Um, can we switch to the uh, overhead camera real fast so we can get a little bit tighter shot on this one? Yeah, so 
qu real quick table of contents. We'll show these off. Do 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 do. Let me just move these. We've there. we've positioned another camera. There you go. Right there. So you guys right. can kind of see a little bit better. You got your table of contents. Um, yeah, know, everything that is in there. And you guys can see it's got a huge section for all the lore. You start off. Uh, it's gonna quick intro here at the top, and then all the way down here is just all the different ages. Uh, you've got the Age of Myth, Age of Chaos, Age of Sigmar, all that stuff that happened. Then it goes over the Mortal Realms and an introduction for each one of those here. Um, it's going to have the factions of the realms, forces of order, forces of chaos, forces of death, forces of destruction. Uh, and then it's going to get into some rule stuff over here. We've got Battle Plans, uh, Conquest Unbound, which is uh, when you play in a specific area. So if you wanted to play in the Land of the Dead, you can use right. Realm of Battle rules. In for those right there are now there's the concept of yeah. place matters yep. yep so you can now it's not just i'm playing age of sigmar it's well, where, where in the age of sigmar are you yeah. playing and those realms actually do affect the game which is yes. really cool it's really cool they open up some new options and we'll get into those a little bit uh it goes over the uh open play all that fun stuff narrative play and of course match play games and all those rules on this side too so that's just a quick overview of what's you can expect in here so yeah man well i don't even know where to start we'll bring it on uh, back yeah. Um, in general, you're going to get huge amounts of... Let's go back to our front camera. Yep. Uh, we're going to have, mm -hmm. um, you know, fantastic art, artwork and really large amounts of lore. And definitely they have put in a lot of time. In fact, I mean, the lore is... Let me let me get get over here <laughs> and talk about this. So this, yeah. this book is 280 pages. Two, 320 pages. Sorry, 320 pages. We are still on, you know, you know look at this. <laughs> this is... This is all of the history of the universe. Whenever you know, somebody says, oh, Age of Sigmar, that doesn't even have any lore, they're, uh, they're wrong. Yeah, not anymore. Um, uh, it is a huge amount of uh, fantastic artwork. You now get tours. Uh, one of the big new things that they... Let me see if I, if I could find one. There, there we go. Like, here's Ulgu, yeah. the Realm of Shadow. Um, not only are you getting all of the full histories and backgrounds on all the races that are currently in the game now, uh, they're now spending a good amount of time extensive. Uh, uh, per realm, yes. going into each realm. What is this realm? Yes. As opposed in V one in in V one where they just kind of briefly touched on them. There's the realm of fire. There's the whatever. Yeah. On each of these, now they've very much become real places. Mm -hmm. They talk about them. They give their history. Uh, who lives in those realms? Yeah. Uh, what what are the major pieces of history that happen in those realms? And maps. Yes. There's definitely requests for maps, and there are lots of maps. I don't. Uh, uh, there aren't full maps on ever on all eight of the realms. But a lot of them do. Let me just yeah. find some right here. Here we go. Like here is Gairan, Realm of Life, and you can see you get all of its history, everything that's going on. There's you know more and more pages about it. Full huge realms. So all of a sudden now, all those people out there, you know, who want to play campaigns, you just want yeah, some background, yeah. or you're just reading reading the books, and you don't you know you need to be like, well, what, what, where is this? What all this fire? stuff what mean? This? What all, all this stuff mean? Shai where is that city? Actually, what is all this? Stuff? Um, and they have tied together all of the global campaigns yeah. are in here as well. So yeah. uh, including the results of them, you know, Shade Spires in here, mm -hmm. and the big uh, the um, the Seeds of Hope are in here. Yeah. The, the three cities this, that, this that people were fighting over. It's very catches cool. you up. It catches you up from the start. Till, all to till the now. current stuff, yeah. all the way through the um, basically the more importance the Necroquake, right? And what happened with all that? Yeah. So that's all been wrapped up in here too. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, the the overall story is pretty crazy right now for for Age of Sigmar. We've got the the new that ties into the new endless oh spells uh, from Nagash uh, because of Nagash's actions and stuff like that. Yep. So it's just really exciting um, if uh, you're if you're a fan of the lore, mm -hmm. lore junkie. This has got a lot of good a ton stuff. now. Yeah. Uh, Slanesh, all the Chaos Gods are mentioned. Yes. Uh, Slanesh is definitely what has been going on with Slanesh yeah. is now in here with fantastic artwork. You get to, They now pretty much spill the beans. This is what happened. Slanesh, this is where Slanesh is and you know, strong hints of what's going to be happening with there that in the future. There is a picture early on. Let me see if I can find it real oh, quick. Oh, yeah. I know, um, I know the one. You know which one I'm looking I for. Know the, I know the one. Uh, You'll find it. You'll find it yeah. while you're looking for that. Uh, and then, you know, after you get through all of that, then you have the three different types of play it's right just, there. It's there got it so much cool artwork, but I want I want folks, Morris, can we go to the uh, top camera real quick because I need to show this one off. Um, there's a really cool piece of art, and actually they show this off on right um, GW's website. But right I need there. to get the glare. Right there. You can kind of make it out. Sorry, folks at home, but you can kind of see there's that purple orb right in the middle there, Let's right? Go this way. Oh, right oh, there. Oh. 
Oh, no, there. That purple orb. But if you look real closely at this art piece, there's a shadow, right? You around see a little shadow going around every. It's kind of in the middle here. It has crab claws. A, that shadow has crab claws, and there's some chains that are bound bound to it. That's Slanesh. This cool. is the essence of Slanesh that's been bound uh, in the hidden gloaming, the the realm in between the realms of light and shadow and there's by the, the by the elves. There's these li all these little yeah. islands have these little teeny tiny specks. Those are people. Yep. Those are like all the elves that are yep. that are guarding all of the big yeah. island prison chains. Yeah. It's pretty cool. So Slanesh has effectively been killed, uh, but Rest restrained. Well, for the for three years, Slanesh has been AFK, just sure. missing in action. Yep. Away from keyboard, effectively dead. Right. But now we know. When now we know he's had a stomach pumped. Right. He's, he's pulled all the souls pulled, out of him. Pulled all the souls out. He's been on a, a, a no elf diet for millennia, <laughs> and, and and at least three years of our time anyway. Uh, Slanesh is, is going to come back. The Dark Prince. Um, they yeah. his his followers know where know where they're, is at. They're, they're figuring it they're out. Figuring now. it all they're out. Kind of narrowing down. We know from the lore from from Daughters of Cain that it's because and, and from it's because uh, Morathi. From from Iden and Thiefkin, we know that it's because of Marathi's greed that the scales right. have been tipped, and now the Saneshi uh, seekers are are starting. Onto, they're starting to figure out. They're starting to figure where, out so, where he is. Again, we're excited to see where they take that. From yep. Here, uh, Slanesh is all over this book, right. um, and there's also the beef that uh, Slanesh has with the Horned Rat, who um, snuck in and kind of deposed deposed Slanesh as a as a chaos god for a little bit there. So yep. uh, I'm sure that's going to go over real well. Once, once you're done with back. all of the kind of lore and background sections, uh, there's an extensive hobby section. So the lore, by the way, that takes you all the way to page... 200-ish. Like <laughs> and then some. 191. Yeah. So lots of background to pull you into this universe. Then you get the core rules. Yep. Uh, as we've already we seen in about a separate book. These books. are so, basically the same... Uh, you get sections. your sta you get your standard uh, Games Workshop uh, color section in the center. Yeah. That's just all photography and yeah. look at the game and all the sexy miniatures. Oh yeah, all that you get a lot of that. And then once we're that. yeah, and then once we're past that, uh, there's the core rules again. Past that we get a little more. Uh, uh, you get allegiance abilities, mm -hmm. which you know special rules. Uh, you get a, a, a generic sets of, of artifacts. You get all of those based on Grand Alliance. Yeah, yeah. You get them on section. Uh, you get the rules for. Uh, fighting in different realms, whole bunch of stuff. Um, what's not in this book are are points. There are no points in this book. Zero points. So this is this just book. the what is what is going on? How does this game work? What's the universe? How do you play games? What are the yeah. core rules? And how do I build armies? So yeah. in, you know, you know, well, how how do I actually play? How do I the play game? the? This is I the core the rules for how to play the game. Right now, if you want to play narrative or open play, you're, sure, you're, you're golden. Good. You're good. But if you want to play match play, like you know, ninety percent of the people out there want to do that. Uh, you will need the General's Handbook. Yes. Which is convenient because it's releasing at the same time. So you yep. can pick this book up. And that book is pretty inexpensive. Yeah. I don't um, remember exactly what the cost is. It's like 30 bucks, some, yeah. somewhere in there. So, Very inexpensive. So we know the points are in here. We don't really need to go through those points because there's points for every single model in the game. Yes. And then a couple of that aren't yet. So yes. that's what's cool. This book has a uh, huge amount of stuff in it. Yes, uh, yes. We're going to take a uh, little break and see anything going on, question-wise. Yeah, before we go to the General's Handbook, any questions right now? So, can we get to the elf in other room with command points? Yeah, yeah, command points. Um, command points, we'll, we'll just dive right in. Let's dive right Those in. Those are going to be in the course core rules. Sure. Um, how do I want to start? Command points um, are, I just wrote about this, actually. Um, they're good, I think, the way they've implemented them, implemented them in this game. So, Let's go over and talk about it. Um, command points, first off, what are they? They're a resource that you're going to spend to activate hero abilities. Sure. Command abilities. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the heroes in the game uh, have some type of command ability mm -hmm. that will, um, it'll say it's a command ability, and you have to spend the command points to actually use them. Uh-huh. So, I'm looking at mine the way right you now. generate command points... You generate command points uh, for each War Scroll Battalion that you purchased. Mm -hmm. So you, you pay points for it that way. Uh, for each uh, start of your hero phase, you generate one. So you okay. generate some throughout the game, up to five total, because right. games only last five rounds. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can also spend your army points to purchase them straight up. So okay. in a, a ratio of 50 points to one command point. Okay. So, so you can if, just if buy you, them. If right. you're willing to go under on, on actual yep. guys, on, you, you can wanna, buy your command points. If you want to buy four command points in a 2K list, spend 200 points, 
get four command points and have an eighteen hundred point army. Yeah. That's it. That's how you get command points. Uh, what command points are used for, like I said, are command abilities to sure. activate those. And here's the thing about command points: you can use as many uh, you can use the same command ability as many times as you want, as long as you have the command points to spend them. Okay. So if I have a command ability, uh, um, I think the Laura Kane has one. I have, uh, as an example, um, I'm picking. I'm trying to find one that targets uh, once per turn when a friendly Stormcast Eternal. Uh, model is slain within 18 inches of you. Instead of removing it, you can heal one wound that has been allocated to it. You cannot use this ability on yourself. Yeah. So that's a cool one. I mean, this this guy has the Lord Arcanum as he, an example. He has four different abilities. Yeah, here's one from the Knight of Shrouds, right? Uh, Lord of Geist. Uh, you can use the command ability at the start of the combat phase. If you do so, pick a friendly Night Hunt unit that is wholly within 18 inches of this model. Add one to the attack's characteristics of this unit's melee weapons in that combat. Oh, sure. You can use that ability right. on multiple well, units. Right, you can just say I'm going to use one on If I have them, four one them, command one points them. open, and I've got four units in range, boom, 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 boom. Right. I can give all four of them. That's a so, big difference from stra uh, from strategy points. So note how, how it's a, also a very different... Uh, kind of a big picture, kind of a feel mm. from 40k, right? In 40k, armies, you build armies, and they're going to start off with a large set, and then they just quickly go down. Yeah. And normally in a 40k game, you know, you're you're routinely out by, like, the end of turn, like, Ideally, two or three. Two or three, you should you're pretty much, hopefully be tapped out and have yeah. already done your damage. Yeah, whereas in this game, you start off with a, you start off with a much smaller number. You're not mm -hmm. going to be seeing Age of Sigmar armies with... 15, 16, 20 You know, unless points. you spend the points to do it <laughs> and, and just no, have like a thousand points on the board. No army. I was thinking about that. Actually, you, you really could just spend a whole bunch of points on the front end, but I don't think that'd be what smart. What you would lose. It'd be bad. It would, yeah. Theoretically. It so you're going to start off with a really with, with a substantially lower level, mm -hmm. and, but you do just generate them during the game. I think so you're going to have a more so even kind of keel. A, right. So you're, you're, yeah. you're, you're going to see them used, at, you know, yeah. uh, in smaller amounts over a longer period of time, including late game, yeah, where which is traditionally in 40k where you're like turn five and both players mm -hmm. are like I'm at zero. There's nothing I can do. One of the things I really also like about the command abilities is that they are hero centric abilities versus strategy, right? Uh, uh, str uh, stratagems, right? Stratagems are great. Don't get me wrong; they they're a unique game mechanic. But stratagems are typically board wide, and you can just pick a unit. Doesn't right. matter. Just call in an order from space. Boom, that unit has this ability now. This takes a lot more positioning and care involved. Like you, like I just read, you have to be uh, uh, wholly within 18 inches, which sure. means you know the entire unit has to be within 18, 18 inches completely, not one dude hanging out with the base. It's got to be the whole unit, um, and it's hero-centric, meaning the, the abilities trigger off of the distance away from the heroes, sure. which means your heroes have to be up front, engaged in the battle. They can't typically be sitting back doing nothing. And that is another one of the big big picture yeah. differences at a large scale is, you know, Age of Sigmar is definitely yeah. hero centric. More yeah. it's more hero centric. Yeah. You know, a lot more rules kind of revolve around your your yes. leaders and the neat things that they're going to let your army do as opposed to 40k where it's more you the the heroes in 40k are important and they're incredibly powerful, but mm -hmm. you, you know, in a lot of cases you're using them indirectly to gain access to other things well, for, for like yeah. their abilities or something their right. their aura abilities. I, I also think I want to point out I don't think that this is going to be the era of hero hammer. No, I don't think so. But I do think heroes are going to play a bigger part in this edition than they did in the previous edition. Sure. Uh, just just because uh, a lot of the leaders, the leader options in your your army, also in HQ choices sure. for 40k players. Right. A lot of those characters have command abilities that you're going to have access to now to where you didn't before because you can only have one general right now if your yeah. general dies you just nominate a new general so right. that's kind of cool and lots of here and, and there's almost, lots of heroes right and almost every hero has yeah. multiple abilities there's, so you, there's a lot of stuff going there's on. typically i think between like three and five leader options per faction anyway sure um so that's pretty cool i i think having that many heroes with different command abilities that can overlap and you can spend them a whole bunch i think it's gonna be crazy for the game um i haven't really done my homework uh yet on on all of the different combos because there's a lot out there but man it's gonna be nuts i, I think the meta is gonna have a big big shake up with command points oh yeah um i think mm -hmm. the, the 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 bidding war for for points you're gonna see it's just gonna be weird it's gonna be weird people are gonna be taking like 1750 lists of 2k and you're gonna be looking at them funny and then they're gonna be like haha turn one charge here's all my crazy here's a crazy right. here's my crazy combo yeah rube gold uh yeah rube machine. machine i built up so mm -hmm. um let's talk a little points. bit about general's handbook so yeah what's in here that's really interesting for first of aerial all, rules all, <laughs> sure 
There's that. There's aerial assault rules. There's a ton of stuff. Uh, let me just read off the back real fast. Other than points. Or just look at the table of contents. Yeah. Because there's so much stuff. It's a weird... There's a lot there's a of lot stuff, stuff in, this in here. Book. Uh, real fast. New open, war play, uh, new open war tables for generating battle plans. Aerial battle rules, which I find awesome. Uh, special rules for narrative game. There's like 80-something special rules that you can just sprinkle in there if you want to mm-hmm. do that. Uh, rules for playing massive conflict. So if you want to play with... Uh, one buddy's collection versus another buddy's entire sure. collection. That's always fun. There's 18 battle plans in here, updated for Age of Sigmar uh, 2. And uh, scenery rules, pitch battle rule, points we talked about. Yep. And then, this is what you're really getting at, all the new allegiance abilities and stuff. Yes. So it's crazy. There's artifacts in here. There's a yeah. lot of artifacts in here. There's allegiance special abilities that you get to pick from. And... I want to switch to the overhead real quick. I think I got there we yeah, go. Ooh, look at that. Yeah. Nice. So as you can see here, it's softback as well. There's a ton of stuff in there. Um, I can't really see from this angle, but you get the idea. Uh, we'll flip through a little bit. So two war. There's that whole section just kind of going over it. Um, just in general. There's some of the battle plans. There's mm-hmm. 18 of those in here. Uh, if you combine those with different types of play. for different types of play, if you want to combine those with the ones in the core book with malign importance or malign sorcery, you there's have just there. a rep, a just a sample, yep. couple pages from the from the battle points. Yep, and then we get to allegiance abilities. Each allegiance is going to have, um, I believe, it's uh, battle traits, artifacts of power, or command traits. Mm-hmm. Every single allegiance ability is going to have those tables to choose mm-hmm. from too. Yep. Um, it's a ton of crazy stuff. And then, and then one of the big things yeah, that people stuff, have been talking all power. about is um, is what is going on with the summoning rules. Oh yeah! Oh man! Maybe Let's... possibly the most controversial um, see. big change to Age of Sigmar is summoning because it yes. works entirely differently get to that page than it used to work uh, in first edition. So, a couple of things, real fast. Uh, there are new summoning rules. Like Blair was talking about here. Those are on pages... Pages uh, 98 uh, and 99, and then a couple extra... Through 101. Through 101. So if you look here, it doesn't have things like, oh, where am I, where's my Slanesh summoning? Where, we've heard about those. Like, where are those rules at? Those are actually in the Allegiance abilities. So... There's a little bit of flipping a little bit, back and forth yeah. in, in this book to kind of figure out where things are. But basically, if your army could summon things, <coughs> demons, <coughs> uh, before. before, they it's been changed. Things, yes. things work a little bit different. Mm-hmm. Um, there's two big changes to summoning. Yes. One, reinforcements points, gone. Right. So there's, there's not even a concept of reinforcement yeah. points anymore. Just you, summoning things, they don't, are free. They you do, do not, not, you do they, not pay reinforcement points. You no longer have to take, you know, I want to bring in a Bloodthirster. Uh, not only do I have to cast a really difficult spell, I also have to set aside right. however many points. points to bring that in later on the off chance that it, that it works. Right. You know, so that's that's I, I I find that good. The thing that's different about it is that each army that can summon now has a new mechanic unique to them for summoning. Yes. Uh, we have seen the Slanesh one. Uh, has been previewed by GW. Uh, well, this is not gonna work. Yeah, I'm just, um, just, just leave it alone. The um, the corn one I find really interesting. It's just still the blood tide points. It's the blood tide points, mm-hmm. but now instead of spending them on other effects, you can stockpile those up and actually bring in new units right so let me read the list off real fast right uh and these change uh based on cost Mm -hmm. uh for eight you can bring in a wrath of corn bloodthirster you can bring a bloodthirster or insate rage Mm -hmm. bloodthirster of unfettered fury that's if you have all eight points and you want to use them that turn yep which is gonna take you it's gonna take a little while to to build a long time for seven points 20 blood letters for six points 15 blood letters 10 Mm -hmm. points flesh hounds and it goes down from there down to two points right um Again, you do not have to save those points. There's no reinforcement right. points. These are just free units. So that's basically. the first big but change. The second change is they have those unique things. It's thematic. It's cool. Right. And each yeah. of the powers is totally different. So totally corn, different. it's blood tithe points, which I believe it's destroying units. Yeah, right? that's uh, it's killing unit. stuff. Right. It's Shockingly killing. enough, corn right. makes killing uh, stuff. With Zinch, it is uh, successfully casting spells that are yeah. not countered, but you don't get to, which seems like it's really easy, and it is, except that their chart, as opposed to, say, the blood tithe, where, yeah. where you're, it's two through eight, um, yeah. uh, uh, you don't even start you 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 don't even get to start summoning things yeah. until you have like twenty six for zinch. Yeah. So you're yeah, you know you, you know yes they're throwing tons of spells but they need to be throwing just a crazy amount of spells to even be able yeah. to pull in in anything. Yeah, I'm flipping over the uh, zinch was 
Starts at 10. So oh, it starts at 10. Sorry. Starts at 10. Okay. Goes up to 36, 36. points. Oh, 36 is the, is, the, is the Lord of Change. Yeah. So, and you're talking three Screamers for 10 points all yeah. the way up to a Lord of Change for 36 points. Okay. They have a very wide, but like Larry yeah. said, you got to be chucking spells like crazy to uh, uh-huh. to get your, your demon summoned in. I like it. I like the changes. Again, I think it's very thematic and appropriate. I mean, um, because these are free units. Yeah, you don't su- pay points. It's supposed to be difficult. Right? Yeah. That's the thing. It's supposed to be difficult. Under the old model, yeah. you paid the points, so getting them in had to be relatively easy, because basically, right. if they you didn't summon them in, you wasted the points. Yeah. So they had to make it easy to get things summoned, but you had to pay for them. Now it's the exact opposite. So basically, I mean, if you're a Chaos player, you just need to have a bunch of... You just need to have a box of You just need to have a box of demons <laughs> lying around. Yeah, you can use. We have a question. We have a question. Undead summoning Nighthawk or otherwise? Yeah, undead summoning's weird. Let me let me go through that one real quick too. Um, He's the undead specialist. Well, let's not go too far yet. <laughs> He's uh, read the undead section. How about have, that? And by I reading, have. I mean like he read the cliff notes. <laughs> yes. Well, I was busy hobbying, so yeah. Undead. We they spent have... our whole weekend painting yeah. these armies. Just for you guys, so we yeah. can play the play, play this game. Find out where it was exactly. Dun, dun, dun. Oh gosh, Catch you'll find. You'll find. I'll keep it. flipping through here. While you're looking at that, I'm sure that one of the big things that you guys also want to talk about. So we're going to show you this, and we're There's we're going to come back to this soon. Is we have the Malign course. Sorcery book, and the Malign Sorcery book is really really interesting. So uh, Malign Sorcery, it is an expansion. Um, a particularly interesting expansion it comes in a big giant cardboard box, and you open it up, and it has this book inside it, and it has uh, what you read. It has uh, all these cool little beasties. Yes, all these amazing spells. These things are huge, by the way. Uh, like you can't <laughs> you can't tell how huge these are. Um, Hold it up to your face. You can see. Let me. It's the size of your face. Look. The purple sun, <laughs> it blocks out my face. It's, a, it's also really spiky. Be careful with it. Yeah. So, the Primaris uh, on the other side. Right, where is it? On the the right. I'm there. looking at it. On the right. There you go. All where right. There you go. There is a Primaris Redemptor Dreadnought. Yeah. And the purple sun is substantially <laughs> bigger. Here's my coffee mug. It's the regular coffee mug. All right. It's the size. So, so you know, uh, all of these things are really large. Uh, the, all of the... Um, these things also uh, use a slightly different plastic. Uh, the the endless spells are made out of that plastic that um, you've seen before on things like the 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 chaos dread forts and some of the terrain pieces. It's not the normal um, kind of more bendy gray plastic that most miniatures on Spruce are made out of. It's it's the uh, it's the it's the stiffer hard plastic. So yeah. these things are. Um, really strong, very durable. You have to put a lot more effort into, say, like cutting cutting them off the sprues. Be careful. Yeah, be careful because this one, uh, the purple sun, uses half of like half of the book of the instructions on how to assemble all twelve of these things is yeah. how to build the purple sun because it's We're... crazy and one of the weirdest models that you'll ever build. The Games Workshop has made definitely one of the most bizarre models. Real fast, um, summoning, uh, not. For for undead is not that different from the other book. So like Legion of the Gash. They have their um, grave markers. Okay. Um, and the flesh eater courts are in here too, but they don't have a summoning ability. Right, because they're all ghouls. And yeah, that. they're all ghouls. A lot of the summoning actually is in the cards now. Okay. So like, it's not so much summoning as as it is healing units that lost models. So, right. Yeah, that's the short answer for night haunts. So uh, until we get the book, which might change things completely, right, because, because there's a battle tome on the way. Surprise. Yeah, and, so. yeah, and, and I expect that it's. But I mean. It's, you know, it yeah. should be showing up soon. Yeah. So that's going to be the first new Battle Tome out of the gate for 2nd yes. edition is the Night Haunts Battle Tome. Yeah. So very exciting there. Okay, so back to um, Line Sorcery. Endless, uh, endless Spells. Endless Spells. So an entirely new concept. Yeah. Uh, the miniatures are really fun and beautiful. Just take your time uh, when you're getting them <laughs> off the sprue and make sure you have a really sharp, sharp exacto blade. Yeah. Cause just, Clippers. Cause trust Clippers me, are your friend. Clippers. Uh, the models are really cool. They're very large. Yeah. And um, you get... Uh, so you know, as you can tell, they're they're phys- you know they're quite they're quite large. Uh, grab a Necron from up there because that's oh, yeah. ju- just a generic guy. Well, so a there's like a Necron, just so you can see how big these things are compared to. Here's say, a space undead. Right. So there's a space undead. You can get a good <laughs> idea of how large these things are. Really, are really large. Yeah. Um, and then we get, and then uh, the big thing you get is um, is you get 
all of the cards. Yes. Which, when you flip over them over, these are all of the specific rules on how all of the spells... I believe there's 13 yeah. in here. Uh, all of these things cost points. Uh, endless spells. Yeah. Endless spells cost points. Um, uh, you purchase them uh, as part of your army list, and then you're, if you have sorcerers, they have access yeah. to cast them. And what is interesting and what is different about these is that, uh, hello, they're called endless spells. So basically, once they're cast, if they're not denied... Uh, they stay in play. So now you, you can you can you can attempt to dispel them later. Correct. Absolutely. But they just stay in play. Exactly. As, if long, they, as, as long as they are not dispelled, you're gonna put your purple sun down, and he's gonna where's where's the face? He's right gonna there. be like, I'm gonna he's gonna move forward, and he's gonna eat things, yeah. and then from turn to turn, it's you know it's gonna be running around the table, um, eating things. A uh, very high possibility that lots of these spells are gonna are gonna. Are, uh, are going to turn uh, back on you and can, oh, you know, yeah. will absolutely be dangerous to the army that cast them. I think that's actually the benefit yes. of being second, if I remember correctly. <laughs> yes. uh, let me just read the Purple Sun rules real fast. Yeah, this is, I'm sure, the one everybody wants to know about is what does Purple Sun of, Sa of Shaiish do? Go First ahead. off, it's a casting value of 8. Okay. So you cast it uh, wholly within 6 inches of the model that cast it. Okay. It is predatory. Uh, Purple Sun is a endless spell. It can move up to nine inches and can fly. So excellent. Keep, keep in mind <laughs> that um, keep in mind that endless spells are cast in the hero phase. Mm -hmm. Movement happens later than the hero phase. So that's what's cool. Uh, it has swirling death. When this model is set up, the player who set it up can immediately make a move with it. So boom, gets a move. You set it up within six inches wholly within six inches, and then it gets a nine-inch move. Uh, its ability here is end given form. After this model uh, has moved each unit that has any models it passed across, and each other unit that, that is within one inch of it at the end of its move is subject to the Purple Sun's Baleful, baleful Energies. Mm -hmm. For each unit subjected to the Baleful Energies, roll a, a number of dice equal to the number of models in that unit. For each six plus one model in the unit is slain. If the yeah. unit has a wounds characteristic of six or more, it suffers 2d6 mortal wounds instead. Which is rough. That's basically for like all your big monsters. Yeah. So, so this thing ends near a big monster. I mean, it's really rough. Like it's rough. You, You're you pulling have, an entire it's just, model. It's just boom, 2D, take 2d6 mortal wounds. Yeah, or you chuck it at a unit with like 30 models. You're rolling 30 dice mm -hmm. for each model on a six up. They're pulling, these can be multi-wound models. Like, so you, what you're going to know... scared of those Stormcast? Is that a lot of these things have the key, have have a have a, a, a mechanic called predatory? Yep. So what does predatory mean? What what predatory means is that um, um, there's more too, but that's yeah. The... Uh, pre predatory is the big one that a lot of just the damage dealing uh, endless spells do. And what predatory spells do is at the start of um, of the of uh, uh, movement phase, basically mm -hmm. uh, of 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 each turn. Starting with the player whose turn it is, you alternate moving in the, in the endless spells that have predatory. Right. So if there's two of them on the board, and it's my turn, I'm going to pick whichever one of those two I want, and I'm going to move it. And then yeah. Adam's going to move the second one. And then when it's Adam's turn, he's going to pick any one. Yeah. So these things are going to alternate back and forth under the control of each player. So when you cast them, almost all predatory spells, when you initially cast them, you get to move them right away. Yeah. So, so the guy who summons them, he puts it where he wants to, ha ha ha, and then he throws it into your army, and you're like, oh, you know, half my guys died. And But then the next turn, that thing could just, you know, you purple and it turns sun, around. The purple sun is going to turn way. around. It's going to come right back yeah. at you, you know, or the big giant, or the big giant mouth. Uh, the book is really cool. Yeah. Because what the book does is, in addition, uh, first of all, um, the book has more in it. Uh, 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 Malign sorcery has a lot more in it than just uh, endless spells. Obviously, yeah. that's the meat of it. But it also has artifacts. And new, oh, there are and new so many. And new missions and all kinds of stuff. But for each so one of these many. spells, it has like a two-page spread that tells you what the spell is. Yeah. It's full history in the Age of Sigmar. Yeah, which uh, is fun. Like, who invented it. Yeah. Um, how it works, you know, what the rules and mechanics yeah, yeah. are for it, and then it has a, 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 my absolute favorite part of this whole book, because I'm just a, a, a fluff bunny, is that, so these things are, are endless spells, right? Yeah. And in theory, an endless spell that's been cast stays in existence until it's, dis until it's, uh, it's killed. until killed. it's dispelled by a sorcerer of greater power. So this book is full of examples of particularly <laughs> powerful versions of these spells yes. that were cast by, like, say, um, uh, they have a great example of there's one of these things, there's the big, uh, the pendulum, yeah. uh, like the Pendulum of Death. Uh, there's a pendulum that was cast by Marathi, who was, like, one of the first <laughs> ones known to be cast, and she's yeah. one of the most powerful spellcasters in, in Age of Sigmar, so no one can uncast it. And it's just out there. <laughs> so it's the, the way, Energizer Bunny of Death. Yeah. So 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 the way this spell works is um, 
when you cast it, because it's basically an endless pendulum that just swings back and forth and, and, and cuts you in half. So when you when you cast this, you put it on the board, uh, you know, some distance from the caster, and then you pick its direction. Yep. And it, and it's a predatory spell, uh, but um, when it moves, it has to move exactly in the direction it's facing its its maximum distance. So it's just going to eventually leave the leave the table, and yeah. there's nothing you can do to stop it. It's pretty crazy. So it's really cool, right? You have a giant gunline army, and you're just going to be like, "Well, I'm going to put it over here," yep. and then the other guy knows this thing is just going to walk its way yep. methodically all the way across your army, unless you get out of the way, as opposed to some of the other ones that just move around and change, cool. or hop or teleport yeah. or whatever. So it's really neat. Um, another thing that we mentioned this art the artifacts. Yes. So real fast, we mentioned again the realm of battle stuff in here. Mm -hmm. This is very much a companion to that yes. because now not only do you have realm of battle rules in here, you also have uh, spells. There are six spells, I believe, for each realm in this book. Sure. That if you're playing a battle, say in Shaiish, the land of the dead, uh -huh. you you have your your wizards also have access to those six spells from this book. Yes. And the one spell in here for that realm. So you've got seven extra spells to, to choose from, which is going to make those each players happy because now you can actually cast twenty spells in a turn. Yeah. Uh, um, on top of that, each one of these is going to have artifacts that are unique to those realms. I think it's I want to say it's six per realm as well. Um, you know. And there's there's all, like eighty plus magical items and spells in, the, per, in this book for you to choose from. It's a lot to dig through. It is and, a lot. <laughs> and back to the concept of place now is important yeah. for Age of Sigmar. It's also neat because every endless spell um, draws yeah. it, draws its energy from one of the mortal realms. Yeah. Right. So, Purple Son of Shaiish obviously is. Um, uh, okay, so just so you all know, because Purple Sun of Shaiish has been around since Warhammer Fantasy. It has, yeah. That was the big scary spell in Eighth Edition. Sun. Yeah, was 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 Purple Sun. So um, basically, when you're in the realm of Shaiish, which is the 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 death realm, yeah, um, the sun is the purple sun. Yeah. So when you're there and you look up and see the sun, if you're in Shaiish, the sun is purple and it has a big giant skull, skull face. Yep, yep. And if you ever basically, if you if you're in direct sunlight, it kills you. And it's, it, it like the it's the, bad. the the rays of the purple sun of Shaiish separate the soul from the body so you have to always like stay in shadow or Drew under shade Drew bed. or you know have a cloak unless you're already you. dead so what the spell is doing is anytime someone casts purple sun of shaiish they're basically pulling a, a small avatar of the sun mm -hmm. into whatever realm they're in and then it's landing on the ground and running around like crazy yeah. so that's what the purple sun actually is so if you each, do if you cast it in the realm of shaiish so you're playing a game in the realm of shaiish it's more powerful it's more powerful it moves 12 inches instead of nine inches. right and Every every endless spell on these cards will tell you it. It'll have a thing at the very end that'll yep. that'll tell you what realm the endless yeah. spell is from and what its and what its 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 bonus is if you're playing your game in its home realm. Yeah, which is really cool. Once again, I like this concept of. I mean, think about this for like, it's going to be so easy mm -hmm. for things like. Um, Tournaments, <laughs> tournaments can just like make their tables. This round we're playing in the realm of death. Exactly. This and, round we're playing right, or in the they realm can make life. different tables. Right. Yeah. You know, all the red tables are in the fire realm. All yeah. the purple tables are, and then you know, and, and it affects you. Or if you're doing campaign games or whatever. Just yeah. the fact that like location matters now. It actually yeah. has in-game effects. That's such a cool concept. I think it's so great. Now we get the command points. Uh, that's that's a reason to bring heroes. Now we have the malign sorcery, which is another reason to bring wizards. You're mm -hmm. gonna want wizards. Uh, yeah. You're definitely You're gonna, gonna need want wizards. wizards. Just to block just them. To, just to help. They block thirty inches now, so it's you want to have some defensive wizards. You, you you need them. But I think it's so cool. There there's I don't think there's a, any rule against having multiple purple suns running around either. As I far as I can don't tell. know whether you. I don't. There might have been. Something. Well, I mean, you do need the model. Right, but there's if both that. players bring one. Right, and I you both played the, paid the points I for one. I believe that is. You can have two of them. Right, running around. What happens when they hit? Do they just like make a supernova? I, I don't. That's not. I, I, In my head, they do. I think they kiss. They kiss. <laughs> and that's how we get miniature purple suns. But um, bum. No, um, yeah, it's it's such a cool kit. I, I feel like if you are. You know, if you're a serious tournament player or big uh, narrative player, basically, if you you play, want these, kids. basically, if you play Age of Sigmar, you need to buy Malign Sorcery. Yeah. It, it is effectively a part. It is it yeah. is just a a sold separately core Expansion core, core part of the game. Yeah. You're not going to want to. Yeah. I mean, you you need access to these spells yep. for your armies, and at the very least, you need access to the information of how these spells work and how to stop them. Absolutely. Yeah. And it, they're super fun kits. It is a super fun kit. It's, yeah. it's it's fun to build them. It's fun to paint them. Yeah. And they're neat. And we not, recommend doing some crazy colors on them as well because, I mean, they're magic. So, right. you know, you don't have to match your exact, um, your, your, yeah. you know, your army might be, maybe match the bases, I guess, but 
get crazy. Like, yeah. do some crazy yeah. colors you would They're never all supposed on. to be physical manifestations of magic. Yeah. So, you know, don't paint these things like they're rocks and you know have fun you know <laughs> you know you know make yeah. them cr you know this is the time to use all those insane loud paints that you're yeah, like totally I'll, I'll never use those to paint my army they're why so, would i ever use they're that so bright crazy bright color yeah. because i can mm -hmm. uh now we're going to show off some of the miniatures because that are magically floating over here do -do 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 -do. it's going to pull some of these over yeah. because apparently we've had a request <laughs> to see some of them so um this is the executioner guy i just want to say real fast uh, so i did all the nine haunts Larry did all all of the all of the Sigmarines this weekend. This weekend, we're tired. Yeah, um, <clears throat> they are the the night haunts are super oh, no. spindly. If you are going to build them, PSA, just be very careful. Um, well, these are this is spirit host, but yep. yeah, the, the, I, I bought some spirit host to fill out the army, but the um, general, the general dude on the horse is on super the horse. Cool. That's the guy we need. Yeah, this is an old kit, but yeah, we'll take spirit host. Back. The uh, the night haunts are super spindly, so be very careful when you're when you're building them. Um, once they're on the base, they're fine. Like, like this guy's really cool. Um, look, I'm picking it up and touching it. He's not breaking. I know a lot of folks were paranoid about that, but it's it's plastic, so use plastic glue in your assembling, because holy crap. Just, you would not want to use yeah, super glue. If you don't want to use super glue. But um, they're really cool kits once you get them built. Uh, just be careful with them when you're, when you're handling them, because they, they're just very spindly. All right, let's um, show you these guys. Yeah. So... I did, uh, do you want to talk about the paint process? Does anybody, I mean, we can talk about that real quick. Yeah, so paint process on these, uh, the Night Haunts for me was a really simple um, color scheme. Um, I was a big fan of the Lord of the Rings Army of the Dead. You know, I'm sure yes. you guys remember that. I remember. Um, that was a, a, a scheme that I've always wanted to do. So uh, this, this army was the perfect opportunity to do that. I just want to say real fast, too, these are not finished in terms of stuff right. that I want to do with them, but we wanted to get them to a point where we could show them off painted. And play um, some games. And play some games. Um, I don't have the paint list on me, but um, I basically looked up Duncan's How to Paint Spirit Host, and he has a really fun tutorial uh, on Warhammer TV about um, using the one of the technical paints as the base color on a white primer coat, yep. and then um, going from there. Um, but it's just, it's really quick, uh, dry brushing and just the, the technical paint. I'm looking the name up now. We'll have it all actually. Um, but yeah, it was, it was a super fast build and, and paint, but I think they turned out pretty well. It was, it's the Nihilac Oxide is the base color. I hit it with a Coelia green shade and then I used a uh, Hellion green as a, as a super bright kind of neon uh, dry brush, mm -hmm. which is a, that's a dry paint by the way, so it's super easy. And then I layered it with uh, um, put a little bit of white on there. Basically. Yeah, that's the Olefin Gray, which really is a, light a light. really light white highlight. It's an off gray kind of highlight. It's not a pure white, um, but then I, I hit it with that and just kind of try to hit the the raised spots and things like that on the on them. So they look very unearthly and ethereal and, and ghostly. Um, my plan is to go back. Um, what I like about this is I, I can add more to it later. So my plan is to go back. I'm going to do the metals, um, make those look super rusty and, and aged and weathered looking. Uh, I want to do like a metal with some orange in there and, a, and a, um, a wash to bring it all together. I think it'll look all rusty and corroded and super cool looking. Um, and then I also want to pick out uh, things like the bones uh, and the horse specifically. I want to do like a bone color on those. And then the, the um, each model actually has essentially two capes there's like the yes. physical cape and then there's the 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 lower part which is kind of the ethereal kind of ghostly energy. Matter, the yeah. energy of it yeah um so i want to go back and paint the top capes a different color um i'm probably going to go with the purple sure. uh to tie it all together with nagash and the undead because eventually i want to get that kit and then go do, do do a crazy paint job on nagash so yeah. this is again just uh, to get started um, I think it's a super simple process. Oh, and then the base as well. I use the technical paints on the base yep. to give it that crackle look. Um, but it was a super fun process, um, super easy to do. You can get yourself tabletop ready super fast with that. So I, I highly recommend it. And I've got a write-up coming uh, that will walk you through that as well. Yeah, my Stormcast Eternals, yeah. very traditional, you know, silver base coats, um, you know, nothing crazy. Uh, the primary difference between these Stormcast Eternals and the ones that came in the first edition box set mm -hmm. is that these Stormcast Eternals, uh, they're, 
uh, they're kind of cleric magic usury. Yeah. So they have a lot. Uh, they're basically Stormcast Eternals wearing cloaks. So yeah. there's a lot. They have a lot of drapery and fabric. Both. And it's not. It's not just capes like we saw commonly before. Right. But they actually have tabards and 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 all kinds yeah. of, of a uh, cloth. They have of, a different of, cloth besides cloth. The, besides the, the cape. Yeah. They look uh, so, somewhat monastic. Yeah, like monks. Yeah, in, in nature. So there's a decent amount of paint. A large, large amounts of the models have a lot of their armor covered with cloth. Mm-hmm. So you know, it's the same thing. It's it's Stormcast Internals. Yeah, and it's, you painted them using basically the studio, studio uh-huh. colors that we've chosen, which is the silver and blue that you can see. Yeah, um, yeah, nice and easy. I mean, we got for all you guys who are out there, and and yes, we know there are pro painters and they're awesome, and you should definitely do that. But you know, if you're just looking to get your guys on the tabletop because you don't yeah. want be playing with with gray plastic we got this entire box set done and painted this weekend yeah it doesn't was, take a long time it doesn't take a lot uh, you, you can get your army done yeah. in a week from the time you buy your box you can absolutely get everything in that box uh painted and on the tabletop and looking awesome mm-hmm. you know a week later and again we 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 want to go back and touch these up and do stuff like highlights and and things like that eventually but um, just for the purposes of trying to get this stuff ready to go so that we can show off the actual gameplay with, yeah. with some painted models, I think we'd be pretty good. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with it. Yeah. And again, it's it's stuff we can build off of. It's a solid foundation. Um, and it was fun. I, I've Like I said, I've been wanting to do that army for a very long time, and it was mm-hmm. fun to get to finally execute that. Uh, so. I am excited on the Stormcast Eternal side of things. Uh, yeah. We do have a, a good gender mix. So there yeah. are definitely uh, there are male and female Stormcast Eternals, and they didn't go the like some of the the more traditional route that you see in a lot of games of you know this is you know these are Howling Banshees and they're all women right or, or yeah. so so it is just a mix. Just a mix Every yeah. squad has sometimes this you know you know with with one squad the sergeant is I think the ghost did too though is female and with the um, you know on all the squads have like one one or two mixed in and they did a really good job they're not yeah. like overtly feminine you have to kind of pay attention you know if you stop and look at them you'll be like oh. You know, it's but it's just kind of matter of fact. They put them yeah. out there. You know, it's you know I like to see it. Yeah, it's good. They're in there. They look good. All, the whole army looks like it looks. It still looks like a big cohesive. Yeah, exactly. Fighting they, force they, of they don't. Cast. They don't look out of place at all. They, yeah. They just they 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 blend in with their squads really well. Like you said, it's kind of matter of factly. Like here they are. Yeah. And they got big hammers or maces and mm. shields and ready to kick your butt. Yep. So, yeah. Any other questions? Yeah, there have been some big changes. Big changes, yeah. Between the two, um, two editions, what are your most, I, I'm not going to say favorite, but yeah. what, is, what are the changes that you are looking forward to using on the table the most? Ooh. Uh, I like that you can, um, uh, you can now, you can, you can still fire into combat, but you can't fire mm. out of combat once you're locked in. So a little that was that was uh, that was always a little you know that was that was an an area where I think they 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 over streamlined in yeah. first edition. Yeah. So it was weird to be the like shooting change. Yeah, to be like yeah. my rangers with their bows are here, and then they get in combat with corn berserkers, and they're still shooting out at some other unit yeah. twenty four inches away, and you're not going to see any of that. So just that yeah. concept of like once you're in combat, so you can still shoot shoot your bows in combat you can still fire right, right. but you have to fire at things that basically you're in combat with yeah. so they'll so be like oh, yeah so. you know they'll be doing the the, the point blank legolas yeah. tricks at the berserkers but they're not going to be like i'm going to ignore you guy with an axe while i shoot at someone yeah. across the table as a person who likes playing with big monsters uh, i always found that to be super annoying cuz like i'd fly into a combat with a unit with my monster to fight here and then like try to tie down their artillery piece with like a chariot or something so that it wouldn't shoot my big monster and then it they just would didn't just work. shoot it, and it wouldn't work. It didn't feel right, like thematically. It, felt, it felt wrong. Right. It, it felt it was it was yeah. overly abstracted. Before. Yeah. But they they've cleaned it up. I think uh, another. I don't want to say this is a big change. It's it's different from 40k, which I do like, uh, which is the way uh, you can still move in combat. So. Oh yes. In 40k, if you are base to base. Uh, your unit can't move. Yeah, like, you're, you're, you're well, locked. Those models, those two are locked, models are locked. Are basically locked well, once they touch. Because the rules, the way the rules are worded, you cannot uh, get any closer, so you can't move. Um, in Age of Sigmar, it is now uh, you you can move as long as you are no uh, no farther away than when you started. So if two models are base to base, so we're going to give you an example. We're going to go to the uh, uh, the overhead. Yeah, this is kind of a, a big deal. So check this out. Yeah. So let's pretend, and obviously, and this is a big difference from, say, you know, this is one of the things yeah. that we've said between 40k and uh, and Age of Sigmar. So right now, I'm the target. So yeah. I'm sitting here, and this guy has come and he's charged me, and he's in base to base, and there's some other guy, and we're gonna pretend that there's a bunch of stuff around yeah. here blocking him. So I want, or this... just just we'll just do this here. Yeah, like that. They're base to base, um, side by side, or whatever, base to base. 
Now in Age of Sigmar, uh, if you're playing 40k, this charge is basically blocked. You can't do anything right, about it. Right, because they're both touching. They can't, yeah, get, any closer, can't get any closer, so, they can't, so they're, they're both immobile. Yeah, piling in a movement works differently. I can end my move uh, as long as I'm still no further away than was when I was starting. So you can slide around. So I can slide. That's basically what I'm saying. You can slide around the model and free him up. As long as I'm still touching, I can't do this move and get away unless it's a retreat move. But if I do that, if I move from this position blocking my charge to this position where I'm still touching, we're still base to base, now I've cleared the path and I can get more models more, in. More guys in. Yeah. That's the whole... That's Which one is of the minor changes, but it's, it's got a big impact. I think it's... it's uh, and positioning the, matters and, a lot. And one of the, of the big things that everyone who played Age of Sigmar uh, coming over from 40k, you would always hear about is the whole concept of, well, is some people really liked and some people were really freaked mm -hmm. out by the concept of having to roll every turn ah, for yeah. initiative. And they have definitely changed that. You still roll for four, still four. Roll. That is a core mechanic of Age of Sigmar. Mm -hmm. Just embrace it. Love it. It's <laughs> part of the game that you're agreeing to play. It's not bad. It affects both players equally. Yep, yep. But the chances that someone is going to get the two turns in a row is less now. And that's because they changed the way ties work. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's still a roll-off at the start of every turn. You roll yes. off, see who's going first that turn. But in the case of a tie, whoever went first on the previous turn... Picks. Picks. Uh, if it's the first turn of the game, it's whoever finished deploying first picks, which is kind of neat. Uh, yeah, it changes it, things up. It benefits smaller armies. Yeah. Uh, there are some benefits, uh, again, to, to, to going second, so it's not like you're alpha striked out of the game if you go second. So that's a good thing to know. But um, like Larry said, it does it does bring the odds of getting that double turn, it squashes a little bit. A little bit, right. So still, it's, just it can still happen. It's probably going to happen to both players once during the game, but it's, yeah. not, it's probably not going to be happening all the time. Because so, it'd be really odd for a player to win that roll and then allow the other player to get the double turn. Via tie. Via yeah. tie. Yeah. Yeah. So so once again, you know, yeah. I'm sure they've taken player feedback. They've watched a lot of games. They've tuned it. So, yeah. you know, they don't they don't want to take it out of the game because that is that is one of the defining characteristics of Age of Sigmar, right? When you you get play this game huge. because yeah. you just, you know, you, you that's just, you know, fog of war and weird mm -hmm. things happen. But I I think they probably agreed that they didn't want it to happen as much. They wanted it right, to be right. like a special occasion, like once or twice during a game it was going to happen not all the time. Yeah. So but yeah, that's uh, that is it, guys. It has yeah. been. Uh, we've enjoyed spending our one hour with you. We are going to uh, take a quick break. Don't go anywhere. We are going to be back probably in about five ten minutes with our game that is right right over there. You can't see it. It's it's right over there. Our table is set up. Yep. We're gonna be moving all these miniatures over there, and we are gonna be playing uh, First Blood. We're gonna be playing First Blood just like uh, you would play if you got the game. Get the box set, the Soul Wars box set. Uh, right out of the box, basically, with those same same yep. units. We have all of our cards. All the cards ready to go. And we are going to be learning to play with you guys. Well, we kind of know how to We kind of do. We yeah. kind of do. But we're going to be playing with you guys to help show how the game works. Um, and we're going to get through a couple turns, hopefully finish the game. It's 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 under a 1,000 points. Yeah. Um, I did some math. It's roughly 54 wounds for the Stormcast and 50 wounds uh, for the Night Haunts. So... Um, that's kind of why you, they had you do first blood. Sure. Because it's about the same. It's about the same number of wounds. So, um, but yeah, we're excited to do that. All right. So and we'll be right back. We'll be right back. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.